their kata, uh, this that they are discussing, talking about, becomes very, very sweet, very captivating to the pritkarna. Prit means the ear and the heart. Now, pritkarna. Karna means ear, prit means heart. So, when the devotees of the Lord take the subject matter of Krishna's appearance and they discuss it among themselves, and they glorify it, they broadcast it, then this vibration is most attractive. And so what happens? So then others who are not yet devotees, they become attractive. Huh? Their ears become pulled to the assembly of devotees. Their hearts become attached to that assembly of devotees. And they want to drink this nectar of Krishna's pastimes. Huh? As the devotees are discussing among themselves. They want to drink it. And then, what is the result of that? The result of that is that real dharma becomes manifest. Tad joshana. Asur appavagasya vartmani. This is the way that this appavarga vartmani, this means the path of appavarga, we've already explained, namasyahi appavarga. Real dharma means this appavarga, this ending of all the vargas, of all the... Uh, even the uh, so-called good, uh, good aspects of material life, ending the whole thing, ending our material entanglement once and for all, that is the Bhagavad So one cultivates this path by the hearing process. So therefore, Krishna consciousness is inseparable from Dharma. You cannot practice Dharma. There is no such thing as Dharma without Krishna consciousness, without Krishna Kata without hearing about and discussing the Lord's pastimes. And this is the reason why He is descending on this day. This is the reason for Janmastami. This is the actual reason. The Lord came so that we could talk about Him. <laughs> so that we can remember Him. Huh? So that we can taste the nectar huh, of this <coughs> transcendental kata, transcendental narrative and thus advance on the path of real dharma. And this advancement means, uh, the conclusion is, Shraddha Raktir Bhaktir Anu Kramishyati. So, that step by step, Anu Kramishyati, Krama means step. So step by step, one first of all, from associating with devotees, hearing about Krishna, one gets Shraddha, one gets faith in Krishna. Then comes Rati. Rati means Attachment, attraction, attachment. One, just like I've, you know, Spoh had so many conversations with persons who, it's actually it's a kind of bittersweet lamentation that they reach some point in their life where, you know, there's still material desires, there's still the memories of material sense gratification. But now, the we, sh we shall say the poison of Krishna consciousness is in the blood. And they can't give it up. And then they're torn between these two worlds. And then because it's there in the blood, they can no longer enjoy material life again. And, they, and they're kind of like, they lament a little bit about that. <laughs> There's a certain stage of lamentation. They see it all before them, but they know, now I can't enjoy this. Oh. <laughs> No, but we shouldn't remain like that. Actually, we should go to the platform of real enjoyment. So you see, this rati, this attraction, this attachment, this entanglement in Krishna consciousness, wherein one suddenly knows, oh, it's got me. I can't get free now. Then, we should jump from this to the next stage, bhakti. So, shraddha rati bhakti. Anukramishiti. Bhakti means pure devotional service. Just become a devotee. Mamana Bhavaman Bhakti. Yeah, forget it. You can't enjoy it. That's right. So forget about it. Instead of thinking about that Mamana, huh? think about Krishna. Bhavaman Bhakti. Become his devotee. Madhyaji. I worship him. Namaskaru. And offer your obeisances to him. Surrender to him. This is what we should do. So actually, Krishna is descending into this world. 
this is just to create, you see, an attraction to him. That's all. That's the reason why he comes. He displays his wonderful pastimes so as to uh, create a, a transcendental subject matter, sweet tasting subject matter which will attract the whole world to Krishna. And Prabhupada said that if we have love for Krishna, that is our desire today. That is why we are here, we fast, we engage in all the special activities of Jamastami, because we are hoping that Krishna will reward us with love. So what will be the symptom of that love? Will it be that our eyes will always be moist? Will it be that our voice will be trembling? Will it be that we will sometimes bump into the wall, not being able to see where we are going? Maybe <laughs> that will also be there. But that, these, these are not essential. Prabhupada explained what is essential. The essential symptom of love. Again, citing his discourses from 72. He said, it's very simple. <coughs> that if one has love for Krishna, then he wants to see Krishna's names, the glories of his holy name, expanded everywhere throughout the world. This is love. If we actually have love for Krishna, then we want to see the holy name of Krishna on everyone's lips. We want to see the holy name of Krishna invading everyone's ears and driving out all their nonsense thoughts and replacing all this maya with only Krishna, 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 Krishna. That's it. As I sometimes say, we want to see the day when every time a television set is turned on, there will only be Krishna. And now the news from Vrindavan. <laughs> Today at the Bangi Bihari temple. What? <laughs> now news from Mayapur. <laughs> <laughs> now news from Radhadej. Oh no! <laughs> well, let's have some music. Where's, where's MTV? Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's turn on the radio. Krishna Krishna Hare. Let's look at the newspaper. Oh! <laughs> Bhakti Drew Maharaj came to Amsterdam. <laughs> In every media of the world, only Krishna. This is the desire of one who actually has love of Krishna. So let's pray for that. Yes, we should pray for love of Krishna today. That should be our prayer. Because Krishna appears on this day just to give us that opportunity to develop love for Him. So that should be, that is the corresponding prayer we should have. Yes, Krishna, give us what you have come to give. Love. But we should know that means that means enthusiasm. And this word enthusiasm, I don't know if you've seen the GBC journal, the latest one. Anyway, there's an article by me in there, because I'm the chairman. So I explain this enthusiasm. Uh, just like in Sanskrit, utsaha. So ut means uh, like uttama, transcendental. And saha means together with. And in the English word, and I suppose it's a word in so many languages, so enthusiasm, it comes originally from Greek, and en means in, and thus means theos, God. So actually even looking at the two words that way, and enthusiasm, you see even, you analyze their structure, and you find they mean the same thing. That real enthusiasm <coughs> means that one is feeling within himself the presence of the Lord. And one is always with God, with Uttama, with the transcendental Lord. Uh, and so on that platform he serves the Lord. That is enthusiasm. Feeling always the presence of Krishna. So we should desire to become enthusiastic today uh, to spread Krishna's glories everywhere throughout the world. And that is the purpose of this Krishna consciousness movement. Whatever position, again referring again to this Daivi Varnashram, we all have the same goal. One may be so-called posted as a Shudra or a Brahmana or this or that. But actually we're all working to the same end. To expand Krishna's glories everywhere. That is Dai, that is the transcendental Varnashram system. That is real Dharma. And nothing else is Dharma. It is just karma. <laughs> so I will stop here. Anyone know the time? <coughs> huh?
24 past 10. Does anyone know the schedule? Yeah, we are Is there any, anything? Huh? At 12.30, okay, so we have uh, time for the inevitable questions. So it's stump the Swami time. So all of your difficult questions, I know on these dates, everyone comes with a suitcase full of 10 year old questions. So it's Christmas time for questions. Yes, from the telephone. to distinguish those two things, to 
not to feel liberated, but to feel secure in our Christian communist movement? Well, I'll answer your question this way. That a joy is a necessary symptom of devotional service. Brahma Bhutta Prasanatma, no so Shatina Kanjit. So when one is on Brahma Bhutta platform, then one is naturally Prasanatma. But uh, Prabhupada also said that while Krishna consciousness is joyful, that's a fact. He said that if we do not uh, study his books carefully, and actually he said, we were speaking of Dharma, he said, Bhagavad Dharma, Bhagavad Dharma means hearing and chanting about Krishna. It means this very study, learning about Krishna. And that is the life of everything we do. That is a life. That is actually the source of the real joy, the joy that lasts, that is eternal, that will maintain us in the joyful position. So there's no differentiation between the two. This, uh, this joy which comes and goes, this is just some drop of mercy that one may get by the association of devotees, coming into the devo association of devotees. Then there is some encouragement, one feels this bliss. But unless one becomes steadily fixed, in the process himself, then he'll not remain joyful. He'll again, as soon as one uh, feels the impulse of material attraction, you know immediately that you're no longer in prasanatma, in spiritual bliss. So how do we overcome this impulse? Then we have to become firmly situated in the process, which means knowledge. Which means we have to carefully read, study, remember, quote Srila Prabhupada's books. That will reinforce the intelligence, the spiritual intelligence. This is Buddha Yoga. To become steady in devotional service means Buddha Yoga. It's the intelligence, the intelligence that makes one steady. And the intelligence must be strengthened by Guru Vani, Prabhupada Vani. And that's why we have to read Prabhupada's books. And if we think that we can just... This is what Prabhupada said. He said that uh, unless one is uh, serious about understanding his books, then whereas now maybe we are chanting Hari Bol, Hari Bol in the future, there will be no more Hari Bol, Prabhupada says in one lecture. <laughs> there will be no more Hari Bol. Or just like he explained about the deity worship. In India there are so many temples. So many temples with Radha Krishna deities, but generally when you go, you see this, this is why Iskra temples are special, because the deities are so bright, so nicely decorated, so opulent. Now why is that? Some will say, well, it's because, you know, Western people have so much money. No, <laughs> it's not really the fact. Yes, Western people have so much money, but uh, they're using it to build skyscrapers, not to worship deities. So why is it in this kind of temples the deities are so beautiful and well taken care of? Srila Prabhupada said, it's because here we are hearing and chanting. We are studying Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. And therefore, this fixes us in uh, the steady mood of devotion to Krishna. We want, uh, we, we see by intelligence that we must worship the deity nicely. Whereas in India, it is just a family you know, ritualistic tradition. Goswami family has inherited deities from the, his predecessors. And, you know, his, his reading is limited to Harold Robbins' books and stuff like that. You know, what you can buy at the airport. I've seen, I've seen this myself in India. <laughs> you know, this is the kind of paperback books they read. Fiction books and not Shastra. And uh, so, that be because because there's no taste for hearing and chanting. There's no deep study of this Bhagavad Kata. And therefore the deity worship is very lackadaisical, very, you know, whimsical. And you can see this when you see the deities, they're dressed in dirty cloth, you know, simple, but too simple, not nicely decorated. So all of our devotional service is enhanced and becomes more and more joyful when uh, this is explained by the Lord Himself. 
The devotees derive great satisfaction and bliss. How? By discussing his glories, Krishna's glories with one another. Hmm? Enlightening one another. This is why we have these classes. So next. Yes. Uh, the Vishnu Tattvas, all the incarnations of the Lord, are they actually individual uh, identities of their own, or, or, or is it all Krishna? Vishnu Tattva. Yeah, Vishnu Tattvas, are they separate individual individuals? Our philosophy is like just like yeah. the, the living entities are all, we are all individuals. Well, our philosophy is a chincha beta beta tattva. Everything is simultaneously one and different. But, uh, the Vishnu tattvas are more one than different. And the Jiva tattvas are more different than one. <laughs> <laughs> but one and different, ultimately. One and different. And that's how all these kind of questions are to be answered. Yes? The first explanation of Krishna is uh, in Balaram. But uh, where does Radharani come in? Radharani is Lord Krishna's Shakti, his energy. Balaram is Lord Krishna himself. Lord Krishna is Purusha uh, or Shaktiman, the enjoyer or controller of Shakti. So Balaram is that kind of expansion. In other words, Lord Balaram is also the Shaktiman or the enjoyer. And so Radharani of course, she expands also, as Balaram and all other Vishnu Tattvas are expanding. So she's also expanding to be enjoyed by them. In her original form, she's enjoyed only by Krishna, the original enjoyer. Well, I don't think it's very profitable to think in terms of linear time about these subject matters of expansion. Who was first? And because it's all, as we must, I think we all should keep in mind that this is Nityam, the eternal world. So in order to understand more clearly, then you have to come also to that platform yourself. Yes? We want intelligent people to come. We want beautiful people, just like 
uh, in Australia when Prabhupada was having darshan with his disciples. And then, uh, much to her embarrassment, he pointed out there was one exceptionally beautiful Madhaji. And not being a devotee, she was shy and all that, but Prabhupada pointed out in front of everyone, she is very beautiful. <laughs> she was very embarrassed. And then Prabhupada said, but there's no, you know, we have no objection to her feminine beauty because it is fully engaged in Krishna's service. So yes, everything, feminine beauty, although in uh, material life, a beautiful woman is considered an enemy. <laughs> As a statement, <laughs> men want to make friends with beautiful women, but they're actually making friends with the most deadly enemies. <laughs> but that's material life. But when a woman becomes a devotee, she may be beautiful, but all that beauty is for Krishna. Therefore, on festive days, the ladies, they decorate themselves, they look very beautiful, but it's to remind everyone of Krishna. It all has a transcendental effect. So, Janma, good birth. Just like I was saying, in India, they think Western, to be born in the West is good. And therefore, when we come, you step off the plane in Delhi, and then immediately they're all around you. Sao, <laughs> addressing you as Sao, which you know, means master, like that. I'm very humble, they want to serve you. Of course, they want <laughs> money. That's one powerful motivating force. But they think Western people are so respectable. So what did Prabhupada do? He brought uh, plane loads full of dancing white elephants, he called them. These Western-bodied devotees uh, on the Pandal program, up there chanting, dancing, and everyone was astonished and feeling very embarrassed. That oh, just see, they have taken our culture, and they're even better at it than we are. <laughs> so then, that was Prabhupada's preaching tactic to motivate people in India to take up Krishna consciousness seriously. These Westerners who you admire, they're doing it. Shruta education. So one may be scientist like Bhakti Srupa Dhamadar Maharaj. So he's using his scientific background in Krishna's service. So all of this for Krishna. And in this way are, the, you can say, the obstacles that Queen Kunti remarks about in that verse, the obstacles that these present these four things, four Vargas present on the path of spiritual life, these obstacles are exhausted. Whereas the opulences themselves are, they, they achieve their perfection in Krishna's service. Okay, so now, <clears throat> actually, because we all do have other things to do, especially me, I mean, I know that I have so many things to do. I'd like to end this class with your kind permission. Shri Prabhupada ki jai, Shri Krishna Janmashtami ki jai, Gaur Prima Nandi Hari Ho, ki jai. We can bring that book.